I think I hit the red button. Did you? I okay. think I did. Good. Well, then let's go in. Let's go in. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Hey everybody, I'm George the Antique Nomad, and today I am in front of Big Springs Antique Mall in Princeton, Kentucky, a place that I've found good stuff in the past. Unfortunately, like happens sometimes with antique malls, I'm not sure if they're semi-retired or what, but I'm not finding them here at any regular hours, which is too bad because I do see some cute things inside. We'll do just a second or two of window shopping here. The good thing is, today, I am meeting my friend Pam and she is going to show me some non-chain thrift stores that have good stuff at reasonable prices and I'm looking forward to that because the chain thrift stores in our part of the country unfortunately are about as interesting as a store that is closed. We are here outside of Joseph's and I really am excited to be here. I am with Pam, my friend who introduced me to this. Yeah, yeah so uh, what kind of a place is it? It's um it's a thrift store. People make donations and the money goes back into the community to help people that are having a hard time. Well, that's great. And especially because, you know, this town also got hit by the tornado. So there are some people having a hard time. So I'm happy to trade here. And besides which, they have cool stuff. Yes, they do. All right, let's go look. Let's go. Yeah, I got a pink uh, Hager planter when we were here. And a what? it oh, sold, right. or not a planter, I'm sorry, the figurine of the, oh, oh. thank you figurine of the mother and child so but now it's food on that shelf oh this is free food probably again because of tornado victims that's cool so this is definitely a thrift store and it's always busy every time we come in here I notice you know these old coke glasses from the 70s no oh, there's only two they're real dirty but they're cute yeah um, I think the ones with the white painting are 1970s, and it's when Enjoy Coca-Cola was their slogan. And I think that that, I think the white was 70s, and I think the red was early 70s. You no, know, Chief Petty Officer, that's what my dad was in the Navy. Huh. Those aren't very old, though. I always like that, yeah. Oh, there's sort of Oh, yeah, there's a whole set down there. I know, I, I always think thought... that would be so neat when you have a you know something going on well yeah, i do too you like your cookies and cookies? exactly and you can walk around with it is yeah, the thing i always exactly. thought they were really clever i had a whole set and i made my guests use them once or twice but i never had a big enough house for it to really matter because yeah. everybody yeah. Could, was just no, stuck sitting there yeah. anyway right. oh yeah I love that. some people really like them stained and tousled oh, really? for farmhouse decor but oh, yeah. you know it takes a special person because that one boy that one's really yeah. had a hard life yeah they're little jam jars and the one in the front that the stem is good that's actually a pretty good deal those are 50s and then the hall teapot is actually pretty cheap it's only two dollars if it doesn't have anything wrong with it those are the restaurant style ones probably from the 50s or so it doesn't have the, does it supposed to have a lid it it has a lid it actually sits way down inside it it looks uh, you can't see it with the tape on it oh it does oh yeah yeah, that's pretty clean. I used to see these a lot when I first got in the business. Yeah, a little rough right there. Yeah. I have to admit, I like the shape of this. It's early 70s. It's just a... It's a better style somehow. It could be traditional, it could be modernist. It obviously was intended to have some sort of maybe a flower frog or a bowl or something that you would set in the top. And I see the vintage Polaroid in here with the book, that one. Looks like they only want five dollars for that. That might be for me. A little bit of costume jewelry, nothing real great for me here. A lot of denim. If you knew what you were looking for, I'm sure some things come through here that are pretty good. Definitely has that thrift store aroma. What's Highland? Oh, okay. This is actually a pretty decent pottery that had some pretty good designers, and it's too bad it doesn't have all of the I lids. Know, but I was thinking about just getting two, a big one and a little one. Yeah, actually. So that one and the one and that one. 
Well, you've got two round uh, yeah. fruits there, but you've got grapes and grapes, so just whatever you like, I think. But yeah, I think you're right. Taking two of these would be fine because somebody could use two and they're not marked in some way where it's like it has to be coffee or anything. No, exactly. Yeah. Hmm. Or you could take the two big ones. I think this one was coffee. Probably was. I mean, it's big enough. Or look inside. Oh, yeah. Hey, was it? Free, free or coffee dirt. or something. Or dirt. Well, who I really knows? I like that. You know, I do too. I think those are actually pretty good, and I think Highland is a good company that people overlook, but I think they're going to catch on because they do a lot of modern style. Are you serious? Uh, yeah. Oh, we, we don't take the buggy with... I guess no. the aisles are narrow. I see. Yeah. So you yeah. just put it in the buggy. Okay, well, hey, we, we have a cart. Do you see the sign? Oh, yeah, that's great. I see it. Excellent. I really like the old I do too. I think they're great, actually. I, I think too. they're... I think they're really I cool. That much stuff to put in on I think maybe my favorite thing in the store is sitting behind the desk, and I don't blame them because they don't want everyone playing with it. But look how pretty that Honor accordion is. Well, yeah, I just like this thing. I'm, my next show is in Spokane. I didn't even really notice it up there because it sort of looked like it was part of the decoration. But I think I got to have it. It's only 10 bucks, and somebody put a lot of effort into that. Princeton is sited here because of this. This is Big Spring. You notice it is right underneath the downtown commercial district and all the old buildings here. This is karst country, which means there are underground rivers and springs that come out and all of a sudden you have a river flowing downstream. So Princeton was a natural place for people to settle. And settle they did starting in the 1790s, right about the time that Kentucky became a state. There was a subsequent event that also revolved around Big Spring, a very sad event in American history, because Princeton is on the Trail of Tears and was an important stopping point on the Trail of Tears. You can see here the Cherokee Indians in 1838 camped right here. You can see in the Cherokee language. And a lot of people have Cherokee heritage now, so this may actually have struck people in your ancestry. The Cherokee were forced, in spite of their efforts to assimilate, to move all the way to Oklahoma on foot, and something like a third of them died on the trek. It was very, very difficult. This was one of the better places they got to camp because at least there was water and there was some civilization here. Okay. So Pam has assumed control <laughs> and we are at uh, Nani's. Nani's Attic. And Nani's Attic is in the old outlet center in Eddyville, Kentucky. And it has all sorts of stuff. It's Is it consignment or is it? No, it's all donated. It's all donated. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. Because it seems like a thrift store, but it's a really mm -hmm. good one with better stuff. So mm -hmm. cool. And this is another place that Pam introduced me to. I am really excited mm -hmm. to be finding these non-chain thrift stores because they have more interesting stuff and better prices. So, Better what? Prices. Prices? <laughs> I think. I think I hit the red button. Did you? I okay. think I did. Good. Well, then, let's go in. Well, let's go in. Nani's attic. Yay. So, there we go. Yes, that is, uh, it is very pretty. And someone donated this? Yes. Yes. Oh, and that's so good. Well, I love the fact that uh, anything that we buy here is helping support women in need. That's just really cool. So, we are going to definitely get that, and we're going to look around and find some other yeah. stuff, too. Okay. This is a pretty old vase here. They have $50 on it. The woman serving tea. And this was a Burslem company. Burslem is another one of the areas in England. And this is by G&S Limited. Very pretty piece from about 1910. Art Nouveau style. Cute little gold divided basket from the 30s. Perfect for Easter time. Four bucks. Zoldia Kenyon was a popular artist who did a lot of children's prints back in about 1920, and here's some good examples of them. All three of these are Zula Kenyon signed. You can see the signature there, and they're asking 25 each. They've got nice old frames. This one is called A World of Happiness with the bluebirds in the air, and a doll that sort of looks suspiciously like Raggedy Ann without being Raggedy Ann. This one's really cute with the bluebirds. Now oh, that's pretty. Does the lid come off? No. Uh, it should. Oh, it's small. I thought it was going to be this whole thing. It was too. So we've had to. Made in China, so it's a pretty new one, but it's pretty. 
And then the plates behind it, these are those uh, Ascot service plates by the Grinley Company. Those were popular in the 70s with the cottages, it seems like. That's hmm. pretty. Oh, that is sweet, yeah. $30 on eBay. Well, maybe. It looks like Limoges. Yep. But is that what it's sold for? Is that what it's listed well, for? Well, that's probably what it's listed for, and that's, that's a problem a sometimes. It's a huge difference. From the 1890s. Yeah, that looks old. Okay. The whole pottery, yeah. Yeah, with the gloss glaze. Well, it might be one of the ones that was made by the company I wrote the book on. I haven't seen this piece that said utensils, but they like to put letters on everything in the 70s. And yeah. yeah, it sure is. It's pottery craft. How do you know? How can you um, tell? It's real oh. hard to tell, but the signature is yeah. on there. It's yeah. just the, with the modeled um, glaze oh, on it's it. It's all, really yeah, hard to see it. it but yeah, that's cool. I'll take that. Just because, um, well, you know, it's in my book, so I feel like I have to. I didn't know you wrote a book. Yeah, I wrote a book on treasure craft pottery and pottery craft uh, stoneware. They were sister companies in California. Ooh, they say this lava lamp works. Oh. And it's an old one because it's got the holes in the base. Why'd they have the holes in the base? Um, to let little so, pinholes of light come out because the light bulb's underneath, and I think oh, they just yeah. thought it looked cute. Yeah. And um, that's a great deal. I'm going to get that. Fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars, yeah. Turn it on. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Wait a second. I thought I saw a light on. I thought I did too. Maybe it's not plugged in. I didn't think about that. <laughs> oh yeah, that's plugged into nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and I said it's on. <laughs> oh, let's see here. That's funny. Yes. <laughs> now let's try that again. Yep. Oh, it's on. Yeah. Yeah. That's I wonder if the on. lava, if it works. It takes a long time to heat up. Oh, it's does it? Way up at the top. It should be down at the bottom. But is it wax? It's wax. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's essentially wax, and it melts. And I um, didn't know what a lava. I guess the was. yeah. I guess they have some sort of a liquid. It's suspension. going down. Oh, excellent. That's great. That's what we need. Yeah, it has like a inside. There's a metal coil, and the metal coil heats yeah. up. And then eventually it'll start morphing and turning, but we don't want that to happen because once it starts, it keeps going even when you turn the lamp off. Oh, really? Mm -hmm, yeah, because it's like a That's chemical cool. reaction. It's really cool. I'm excited. Here's another one of these, and we discovered last year that these actually sell for about eight or ten bucks. So since it's that price, we'll take it. And then here's a little bit of the Libby Silver Leaf. From the early 60s, they have a set of four port wine size. Kentucky Derby from 1993, $4.50. Ooh, a four slot simulated wood grain circa 1980 toaster. I'm sure it works great too. The old wearing blender from about 1970. People do like these old ones especially because of the glass. That makes a difference. That's probably a good buy at $8. Oh, really? You've got the Wexford? Uh -huh. Yeah, that's definitely a really yeah. popular 70s. Yes, My mom won a decanter with the cordial set at a bingo game in the early 70s, but my parents had quit drinking by then, so they never really used it. <laughs> and these were by Tiffin Glass, and they made these to go with Franciscan dinnerware in the early 70s. Some of the colors, like if it's purple or red, mm -hmm. and they're cheap, you should definitely pick those colors up because they sell pretty fast. That one's a different size. Yeah, that one's a little taller. Oh. It looks like they've got five juice glasses and, and then one. the medium water glass or whatever that is. Here's a piece of Marcrest. It's only $3 for the divided bowl. Now, this is a little heavy to ship, but this is something that people do collect, and there's the Marcrest name on them. They made other stuff, but this deep sorghum brown glaze with the heavy stoneware is the stuff that people really like to collect from about 1950. This set here is a Johnson Brothers pattern called, we'll show you, Old Granite is this buff colored and then Hearts and Flowers is the name of this pattern. I remember the first time I saw this was at our antique mall in Seaside, Oregon. A set about this size sold for about this price. They have 125 on it. Oh, they have a yard appliance and miscellaneous section back here. I did not see this the last time. 
Ah, my first computer desk looked just like that. A very boring plain affair from about 1990. A very pretty pump organ by Schultz Company out of Chicago. A lot of work to keep those going. You had to pump those bellows with your feet while you played, and then you have the sound boxes up on top where the sound came out. Now we're headed into the side room. I am so excited that I found a lava lamp and an old one because I haven't seen one in a while. It's very pretty furniture. People have been very generous with their donations. I like this one with the rolled arms. Sort of a modified federal style, but this will be from about 1920. Even the upholstery is nice. It's priced at 300. Cute little baby doll carriage from the 1950s, but it's not in great shape. This one's on hold and I can see why. It's been reupholstered and it needs either reupholstering again or cleaning, but it's got the tufted back and it is absolutely Victorian walnut frame. And here is a side chair of the same era for $50. I actually like the original slightly worn upholstery on this one. Here's one of these late 70s mirrors with the gold designs in the back. I've seen them with waterfowl. This one is cattails in a pond with a willow. $35. I think these are coming back into style, especially as brass comes into interiors. Another thing from the 80s that I believe people are going to start collecting. The Eiffel Tower. And this one has a signature. I really like the green color. If Paris actually had skies that color, I think people would be concerned, but it's neat looking. Liberty Blue China, made in England but sold in American grocery stores. And that's why you see a lot of this from the time of the American Bicentennial. Made in England, there's Betsy Ross, who actually was a real person, but had nothing to do with sewing the first flag. Sorry, Betsy Ross fans, but her family made up that story in order to help preserve her house in Philadelphia. Little blonde corner table. This is definitely mid-century. It's for Micah. Sort of a little strange appendage with those arms the way they are, but it's interesting because it makes the corner table part float. I really like these oddball pieces of furniture from the 60s. Not everybody is crazy about the Formica color, but at least this one is small and could fit between a couple of love seats as opposed to having to be part of a huge sectional. The screen is not for sale, but it's a Japanese screen and I love the modernist design. I'm kind of sorry that one isn't for sale. And I don't say that often about screens because they're big and kind of hard to handle. Somebody had a lot of fun painting these very colorful birds on this little corner piece made of maple, it looks like, from about 1970. Somebody made the fisherman there. This strawberry set is $10, and this looks like Japanese fishware out of the 70s and 80s. It is Wild Strawberry by Churchill, made in England. Aha! Uh -huh. Homespun stone casts. So I got the date right, but the origin wrong. The English companies also tried to keep up with the changes in the market that were happening when the Japanese started to take over dinnerware production in the 1980s, and that's a good example. Nice floor model stereo here for $100, but this is one that's missing its guts. So this is the type of thing a lot of people are turning into home bars. I personally would have wanted to pay a little less than that. You would strip the remaining guts out of it because it looks like they don't work well. And the speaker is gone, and then you put it back on it, and you can turn it into a cabinet of your choice. I find this type of furniture from the 70s hard to sell, but you know, now that there's very little of it that isn't stained, finding pieces in good condition like this, if you like the style, it is old enough to be vintage. It's just a little heavy for my taste. These blue ribbon geese are going to be Mary Hadley or Louisville stoneware, and Louisville stoneware, gaggle of geese, that is the pattern. Made in Kentucky, they are still producing. I don't know that they've done gaggle of geese for a while, but now that people are starting to get interested again, maybe they'll revive it. 
if you were interested in blue ribbon geese, Louisville stoneware is really good quality, and you might end up being happier collecting this than some of the lesser patterns that were made in it. Treasurecraft did the ribbon geese, that was their pattern at the time. 36 mg Avon bottle. My grandmother gave me that when I was a kid. Here's a pretty piece from about 1890, $250, but I think it originally would have had a mirror. A little more depression glass here. Here is the Windsor pattern pitcher for $20. $8 on the petalware bowl, $8 on the tray. These are pretty good prices for these items. The Sharon or Cabbage Rose two-handled sugar bowl is 10 and so is this piece. This is Royal Lace. In the Cobalt, this would sell for quite a bit. In the Pink, I still think $10 is a pretty inexpensive price for it. So Pam pointed this out to me and said she liked it. And then when we looked at it closer, it turns out I hadn't discovered this pattern before, but this is a combination of Treasure Craft and Falls Craft. When Falls Craft bought Treasure Craft, part of the idea was that lines that Falls Craft already made, like these fruit lines, Treasure Craft made the chip and dip and the canister set to go with it. So when you look, you're going to see a bunch of different marks. This one on the bottom, don't fall down, Trey, thank you, says Falls Graph. Then you pick up, we'll get that right in a minute. Yeah. Then you pick up the chip and dip bowl and it says TIC, which is Treasure Craft. And on the bottom of the dip bowl or the chip bowl, there's Treasure Craft made in mm -hmm. USA. So this is something that was done just for a few years because Treasure Craft was bought by Falls Craft in 1989 and by 1995 Falls Graph was offshoring everything so they only made things for the Falls Graph lines for a few years but that's a new one on me and I like it it's a hundred dollars for all those pieces which seems like a pretty good deal to me. Hall's White Rose Pottery and this is a 1930s casserole dish with the big flowers on oh, it. Yeah. Kind of pretty it's only yeah. $7.50 that's not a bad price really? for these. Yeah. And it should have a nice mark. They're very oh, heavy, look. that's the thing. I mean, they were, you should feel the bottom. But whenever they have the gold mark, um, rose white, actually, they called it. I've always called it white rose, but there it is in writing, oh, rose so white. Oh, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, no, their stuff, whenever you see the gold mark, that means it was their, like they said, superior quality, mm -hmm. their better stuff, but it is heavy as can be. The lid's heavy. Oh, try picking up the bottom. Hold the lid. It is heavy. Yeah, yeah, that must be five pounds easy. I think it is old. I think it's something somebody made at home because look at this strap here. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think that, yeah, oh yeah, they cut like part of a leather strap to make this. Yeah, I think this so was, big, well, it's a strange size. I mean, they must have had a really big baby, I guess. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> for it. Yeah, it's got some pegs in it. Yeah. I mean, I actually think this is really old now that we're looking at it. Look at the pegs up there. They haven't done peg joinery and yeah. furniture for a hundred years or more. And I'll bet somebody just was using it for their kid and they just took part of an old strap. So this is just some sort of a primitive that was made in the country. That's actually great for $25. I don't know what I'd do with it. I, I mean, see any nails or screws. No, no, it's all completely peg uh -huh. joinery. Somebody made this out in the country and uh -huh. shaped the front a little bit for the baby's legs. Uh -huh. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. We're used to seeing hull pottery in soft glazes, but of this course, after so the obvious. factory had the explosion and they rebuilt, they had to do gloss glazes. This is hull art pottery. This was an old line that they were able to save the mold for. They want 45 for the set. They did a lot of extra bright work on them because they would have sold some of these to other factories to do extra decoration on just to make them look different while they tried to retool and figure out what to make in their new factory. Pam has a showcase here and I've got a space and we did some thrifting today so we needed to drop some things off and we're in the neighborhood and the funny thing is I found a few things to buy <laughs> in Pam's case, and she found something to buy in my space. Uh, sometimes it's like that in the antique business. You just trade around with your friends, but we're gonna send it all through the register because it came into the mall, and it's only right that the mall gets their share for it. So that's what I'm buying from Pam. That's enough. Brings you up to $52.91 so far. And this is what Pam's buying from me. So see, we just sort of trade things back and forth. 
just for fun I'll show you my booth here real quickly and what it looks like currently got a whole lot of games hiding under that table and a whole lot of pink stuff sort of left from a Valentine's Day display but it's all cute these two mirrors have come to me recently I think they're pretty great and this lamp that came from a viewer who I'm selling for and it's a nice Blanc du Chien or Fiore Blanco depending on how you define it with the white flowers some nice Stangle birds and red wing pottery the Singer So Handy machine is another new addition as is the Cypress Knee We've had a pretty decent winter considering that that's not the busy season here because we're out by the lake where a lot of tourists go so it's more of a spring summer fall destination. So I'm pretty happy that things have held up pretty well here. So let me show you something neat in the neighbor space. This is Douglas MacArthur and it says in the corner, I salute your efforts painted by Bob Wilkins. This is on masonite, that's why you see that texture. Masonite was invented in 1929 and was in widespread use as a type of particle board, essentially, in the Second World War. And it was painted to be displayed at the Illinois Central Railroad shops in Paducah around 1942 to three as a morale booster. So it's actually quite scarce. And because it has that background, they have a price of 2,500 on it. But I suspect for a war buff who understands the story, the fact that it's cross-collectible with railroad memorabilia too could make it very interesting to someone here. And if you follow me on TikTok, you probably saw when I brought this piece in last week. This is a rather striking large bronze eagle. And it is signed Moignier's, who was a French designer. This is priced at $17.50. Three of them recently sold online for that price. It's extremely well detailed. It's quite large, it's quite heavy, and I've already had somebody interested in it. And they took measurements to see if they might be able to fit it in their house, and if so, make an offer on it. This one next to it is carved wood. This is by Red Mill, and Red Mill carvers were out of the USA. This was done about 30 years ago. I don't know if they're still doing these. It's priced at 79. So there's definitely more places to see. Come along with us in our next video because I'll bet we find some pretty cool stuff. In the meantime, check out the social media and links in the description below. Check out my website, theantiquenomad.com. You can click appraisals and get information on how to have things evaluated. And also check out our new membership level. We have a level three now and that is a fun way to chat together and talk about what's happening in the antique market. So you can look at that through either hitting the join button or check the link in the description. In the meantime, I'm George the Antique Nomad. It's really fun to have you with us and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye bye. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below Click the bell to be notified when new videos upload. Leave a comment below and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now.